Today we're going back to the olden days. In June of 2019, I built this little thing. It's a 9x9 piston house. It has some interesting redstone contraptions and oh my goodness, Bob's escaped. Also, <laughs> these armor stands are not wearing their armor properly. This is... <laughs> That's not how it's meant to work. But despite some of the oddities that happen from updating a world that's come from 2015, uh, this thing is filled with a bunch of small redstone contraptions and just little things that we have dotted around that make this house a little bit more interesting than it first looks from the outside. Now this build, although it's nothing particularly special, has a bit of a soft spot for me because it was one of the first piston houses that I ever posted on my YouTube channel. People loved it. People got really excited about it and I've been building them ever since and I thought it would be fun to go back in time and kind of recreate this thing but with modern redstone technology. First things first, let's build up the shell. And that is absolutely gorgeous. Now, this is the most standard looking Minecraft house I think I've ever seen in my entire life, but I thought I would stick with the original design that we started off with. Now, another idea that I'm going to take from the original is the idea that the door is not actually the door. I stand on the pressure plate thinking it's going to open the door and instead it opens the wall. Now, of course, when this was originally created, that was a difficult thing to do. You know, to build up some form of hipster door, we didn't have observers or anything like that. It was actually quite tough. So the door itself was only a little one by two thing. Whereas now we're in 2020, we have a bunch of new redstone components. We can go a tiny bit bigger. I'm thinking at least this big, it would be... Mm, no, that actually looks a bit weird. I would say... That. <laughs> that just looks hilarious. Now, unfortunately, I can't say I'm the one who designed this hipster door initially. I used to build hipster doors, all right? And when I used to build them, they used to be <laughs> they used to be absolutely massive. You know, they'd be huge motherboard-looking things, and that was cool. That was what was good back in the day, whereas nowadays, they've reached the point where just look at this. Look. Look at this thing. It could fit in your back pocket. And it's a design by Reverse Gravity. I'll put a link to it down in the description. Now, hopefully this should be everything linked up. I've got my pressure plate, got a T flip-flop running into the hipster door design. And if I walk over this thing, we should see <laughs> that the whole left side of the house gets removed so we can walk in nice and easily. And then when we leave the house, we just have to walk over the pressure plate and everything will close up behind us. This, this is, is brilliantly pointless, isn't it? That is brilliantly pointless. Now onto something that isn't totally pointless. I want to create a super smelter system. Now this is something that we did have in the original, but I mean, I wouldn't really call it a super smelter to be honest with you. It was just a few hoppers running into some furnaces and it basically allowed you to do a double chest into two furnaces. So you smelted things twice as quickly. Is there, That's not really a super smelter. What I want to do is I want to create a proper fully working super smelter. We put our unsmelted items in on this side, they then get taken down, put into a furnace array, and then we get all of the items back out in this chest here. Now I think to extract the items nice and quickly and also get them into our furnaces, I'm going to make use of a hopper minecart. So that hopper minecart is going to go back and forth it's going to pick up the items from the chest and it's going to drop them evenly, evenly distribute them into all of the furnaces. Now, I'm not entirely sure how many furnaces we have, but it's definitely more than two. This is going to be a much more efficient system than we had originally. And I think I'm on the finishing touches of the redstone now. So I've got the item elevator, which is going to be sending the output items into this chest right here. I've got the pickup system, obviously. Uh, I think I just need to add in this little redstone line right here which will make it so that our minecart isn't constantly going back and forth, and it should have a little bit of a pause to pick up items up at the top. And then when it's empty, it will stay there, but if it's filled, it will fill up with items and then move on. That all sounds pretty good in theory. Let's give it a tester. Here goes. Tiny bit nervous now, but I'm going to place a bunch of cobblestone into here, and then when I hit the button, that is going to send our little hopper minecart off. And, well, that is, that's a good look. All of the furnaces are on. All of them seem to have fairly similar amounts of... I mean, has that worked first time? I mean, it certainly looks like it has. All the stone is flowing in from the item elevator and is flowing in at a decent rate. This is not bad. That's quite a simple little system. And it looks... It looks really cool in the corner here. You wouldn't know that there's so much redstone behind it. So I would say that's a pretty huge success. It's all worked well, and I thought I would add some item frames into the floor just so we know what all the buttons do. And I've also added in a button so that we can actually close the door from the inside of the house. Because otherwise, you're going to have a pretty huge draft, aren't you? I mean, that is... Yeah, that's a... <laughs> You'd need a quite a big draft excluder to stop the wind from coming in through that. I'm sure about 85% of my audience doesn't actually know what a draft excluder is. Can't wait to see the Google trends on that one. Anyway, all drafts aside, we still have plenty more redstone to do. There's something very strange going on with the lighting in this room. Look, 
The lighting goes from light level 9 to light level 0 in a block, and it looks very, very strange. Anyway, I was reading through the comments of my 2015 9x9 piston house, and a lot of the people were saying, quite rightly, that I didn't have a bed. And that means that, you know, there's there's like, very few requirements for a house, but I would say a bed definitely is one of them. So I've got that installed, and you can actually sleep in this thing if you jump and right-click on it. But I think we can do something a little bit more redstoney. All right, well, this lighting thing just got even weirder. Look, this has got daylight on it, and it's still pitch black. It also seems to affect any hole that I punch in the floor here. This is very weird. <laughs> this is really weird. I think my 9x9 piston house has a haunted floor. And you know what? The hauntings are actually moving to other areas, okay? Because I've built up a system that works in theory, but it doesn't work in practice. Look, I hit the button, and I should get pushed up with this block. That should all work. Should be up by my bed. But instead, I don't. I, I get pushed off the edge, and I think it's because the double piston extender is a little bit too fast. And I don't think there's any way that I can slow it down, which is a bit of a bummer. I actually think instead of speed, it's to do with the, the pulsing of the pistons, because this machine is actually faster. This new setup is way faster. But the pistons stay extended, whereas the previous double piston extender had lots of kind of one tick pulses and things like that. And I think that just messes with the game and allows you to drop through blocks, which is a little bit strange. But anyway, this system is now working. We can go back and forth between our bedroom layer and that looks pretty smooth, doesn't it? Now it's starting to run very low in terms of redstone space and ability to put in redstone contraptions, but there's one redstone contraption that we absolutely require and that's an armor equipping station. And I love the idea of slotting it in behind this area, but that could be... That could be a challenge. I think by moving around the way that this super smelter powers its powered rails, we might have been able to create a space in the floor for a dispenser, which means that we can actually... Yes, <laughs> I mean, that will work. However, I kind of don't want to stop there. I mean, this this works. This is, this is as simple as it gets in terms of armor equipping stations, but I'm thinking we could probably take, we can take an output from this dropper right here. We can detect that using an observer, and then we can send a redstone signal through into another thing which will allow us to potentially do something a bit fancier because I like making life difficult for myself, don't I? I, I can't just stop at the easiest solution. Right, let's see if this daft idea works then. So the idea is, is that this is a quick kit system. If I die, I can respawn by my bed, quickly drop down here, hit this button, get fully kitted back out with my tools and my armor and run off to get my items. And that has actually worked. That has worked. <laughs> Which I'm very very surprised by as you could probably tell everything is going far too smoothly with this build I'm waiting for something catastrophic to happen and on that note I'm now making a backup next phase of the design is kind of like the main armory So this this area here is all kind of for show Whereas the actual armory which is going to be this drop down section right here is going to house a lot of the resources that are stored in this space and also it houses a lot of the valuable things because this is a kind of slightly hidden, slightly secret part of the base. I've built so many flying machines in my time and yet I have so little confidence that they work. All right, I'm, I'm like, I'm 50%, I'm 50-50 as to whether or not this thing's going to function. So I flip this lever here and that looks pretty good. And that is a deep armory. I mean, we can fit all sorts of resources in here. Okay, and then if I activate... Oh, have I... Oh, I've done. I've balked it. It's been it's been so long since I've used the term balked, and I've missed it. I'm gonna use it a lot more often from now on. Now that our armory system is unbalked, all of the redstone should now be working. I've put some time into filling it in with chests and putting the end chest in place and getting all of the useful things in here. And I gotta say. This is really, really cool, isn't it? The fact that we have this drop-down floor and then you have access to all these items. I kind of want one of these on the Hermitcraft server. And I know, I know, I say that in pretty much every single Redstone video. Okay, but this, just look at this. There we go. So that is the armory all opened up. Hit the button over here. And that is the armory all closed away. I mean, that is just, that's like a childhood dream, right? That is a childhood dream. <laughs> Eight-year-old me would just be going crazy right now. So I thought before we start heading downstairs and things, I should probably finish up the area up here. And I've I found a nice benefit of our little drop-down wall here. Look, so we have an indoors dining area. And then if the weather's nice, you know, you want to have some outdoors dining, you just remove your wall. I want this in real life. <laughs> that seems like it would be incredibly handy. Now, I've set myself a bit of a challenge here, okay? I really want to make a two-wide drop-down staircase in this area. But here's the issue, okay? Obviously, I have no space in this direction. I also have no space in this direction. So I'm very, very limited with where I can go with this. I can build some redstone out the side here. And obviously, I can go underneath as well. 
but it's going to be tricky. I think I have an idea or strategy of how I could do this. So I've got this little slime block slab right here. And by that, I don't mean like an actual half slab. I mean a slab of slime blocks. And then around it, I'm attaching parts of the staircase. And I've got these sticky pistons right here. And I'm hoping that I should be able to extend that slab upwards and then extend these pistons to push those blocks up and then retract the blocks and then retract everything downwards to kind of create our staircase. Should be simple, but I don't know. I mean, I seem to have completed square one, and square one is the difficult bit. Yep, there we go. So that is flush with the floor. That's all good. And then when I flip the lever again... That is it. That wit... That's actually worked. I think that's like the fourth time I've said that in today's video, and I've said it in exactly the same way every single time. I keep being surprised that my own redstone contraptions are actually functioning. They seem to be functioning first time quite a bit. Which is concerning, honestly, because that never, never happens. I'm still waiting for something catastrophic to happen to make up for all of the first times that I've had. Hopefully it's not right now. No, there we go. So we've got ourselves a staircase and then if we do it again, we have ourselves a flat ground. I mean, that has actually functioned. That functions really nicely and gives us plenty of space as well for the build that we actually want to do in this area. This is... This is a cool little design. I mean, it definitely isn't compact. It's not compact in the slightest, although... No, it's not. No, there's no there's no getting around it. It's huge. It's absolutely gigantic. I was going to try and make excuses for the size of it, but no, it's, it's absolutely enormous, but it does work well. And I'm sure the concept can be taken and made a lot more compact by someone far, far smarter than me. So I've just put a little bit of time into creating this little room here that goes off the edge of our staircase. We walk down into this zone. And I'm thinking, in terms of things that happen in here, nowadays, all you really need are villagers. Like, villagers will allow you to get tools, they allow you to get food, they allow you to obviously get emeralds, they allow you to get pretty much everything that you could possibly need, so I think we should probably set up some form of small villager trading hall in here. Now this design is going to make use of the double carpet method, so we can stack all of these villagers next to one another, they're not going to path fine to each other's points of interest, and they're not going to be able to move because they don't think they can move because they're standing on top of carpet, and they don't see carpet as being a full block, because they're morons. I mean, imagine being stood on a carpet and just being like, well, I'm that. I'm stuck here for life now, this is this is me. But with these guys in place, and all hooked up to their points of interest, they're all the different types of villages and things, we've got a small storage system and an ender chest, I think that's all we need in this area here, and I think that's all we need in this 9x9 piston house. I mean, we've crammed, we've crammed a lot of stuff into this area, and we've got hidden staircase systems. I didn't hook up that button, did I? That is so embarrassing. <laughs> As I was saying, we have hidden staircase systems, which actually do work now that the button is connected up. We've got hidden armory systems that have all sorts of resources underneath them and they pop back up out of the floor. This is still one of my favorite redstone contraptions in the build. We've got armor equipping stations, which get us fully kitted out and also fully kitted out with all the kit that we need. We have micro elevators, which take us up to the bedroom and take us down from the bedroom. We've got super smelter systems, which actually are super smelters. I mean, there's tons of furnaces underneath the ground through there. And most importantly, we have got walls that fold away instead of doors because everybody knows that doors are rubbish. All in all, I would say this is a huge upgrade on the original 9x9 piston house that I made five years ago. I'm very proud of this thing. I'm also pretty proud of the original. I, I, I just have a soft spot for that design. But anyway, I do hope that you've enjoyed this redstone video. I'm looking very, very fancy. And on that note, I'm out. See you later. In fact, I'm very curious. I'm really curious. How many of you actually remember watching that video when it released? Now, it's now got a bunch of views, so I'm sure there's some people who subscribed to me from that video, but I want to know, who was there when the video released? Because I would have been maybe at 600,000 subscribers back then. I mean, it's a long time ago. I was still living, I was still living at home with my parents.